And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at the expansion for Abyss, which is called Abyss Kraken. Ooh. Oddly enough, this has not been getting a lot of buzz, but perhaps it's because people don't play Abyss much anymore, which is a shame because Abyss is an excellent game and one that I've added to my collection because I like it, not just because the artwork is phenomenal, which by the way, still phenomenal in the expansion, but because it's just an excellent, it's a game that doesn't really feel like anything else. Let's take a look at what this expansion adds to the base game. we have these. These are black pearls. They're the nebulous. It comes with like a plastic container to hold these. You're going to get these over the course of the game. I'll talk a bit about how you get them in a second. And as you get them, you'll add them and you can tell the difference between those and your beautiful white pearls. Now these are dirty money basically. At the end of the game, whoever has the most of them is going to lose five points and everyone's going to lose one point for each one that you have. In fact, the game comes with this Kraken figure and the sole point of having this Kraken figure is to know who has the most. So the way this works is I have two. So if someone else gets two, they've tied me. Now they get the Kraken figure. Uh, but then later on, maybe I get a third one. Then I would get the Kraken figure back. That's to show who has the most. Now you can get rid of these, but the problem you can't, you can't get rid of these until you've gotten rid of all the white pearls that you have first. Then you can, then you can spend them, but even then you can only spend one unless you have a special power. So it is possible that you can use like maybe two white pearls and one of these dark ones to pay for something. And you can only use these to pay for um, buying lords or giving to other players when you, want this, when you want to take the ally card that shows up. You can't use these to refresh the lords, otherwise that would be a really easy way to get rid of them. So this is something that you're going to want to watch out. Now how do you get these cards? Well, they've introduced these here. These are Kraken cards, and these Kraken cards are really great. There's not too many of them, two, threes, and fours, but these are essentially wilds. They're very useful when you're paying for a lord, because when you pay for a lord, you can say this is red, and it works that way. And you don't ever keep these as allies in front of you, so that you don't have to worry about that at the end of the game. And if for some reason they get discarded from up here, the active player decides which pile they're put into. Now, of course, the problem is when you use these guys, you're going to get the black pearls, the number it shows on there. Even if you never use them, at the end of the game, when the game's over, you have to reveal any that you have, and you'll immediately take that many black pearls. So you might as well get the use out of the wild while you're at it, um, but you're going to have these black pearls, which are slightly good, but mostly bad. Now, the game is going to include a lot of new lords, and this is a couple things. First of all, it means you're never going to run, the game was never going to end with the Lord's deck running out of Lords. But it also gives you a lot of cool new abilities that you can have. Now there's two of each of the new colors, of the, of the original colors, but there's also a new variety of Lords called Smugglers. Now Smugglers are great because they have powers, but many of their powers have to do with the Nebulas here. This is a way to get a Nebulas. This guy takes the corresponding Sentinel token and places it on a free area. And I'll talk about Sentinel Tokens in a second, but this guy here can discard a Nebulas and replace it with a Pearl. So he's a guy who can change the bad ones to good ones. Here's another one that gives you a Sentinel Token. And here's another one that lets you get rid of Nebulas. You can give one to each opponent. Here, when you purchase something, you can use one Nebulas even if you still have Pearls. So you can always use Nebulas, which is a very useful one. Here at the end of the game, you don't receive any Nebulas for the Krakens you still have in hand. So if you still have some of these guys in your hand, you don't have to worry about them. Here, when you buy something, you can pay two Nebulas. And here's another one with a Sentinel Token. What are these Sentinel Tokens? When you own a guy with a Sentinel Token, you'll take that token, and on your turn, you can place that token on one of the Lords. Only you can take that Lord now. No one else can take that Lord, and so he will be, you know, whenever you get around to buying him. Once you buy him, a token comes back, and you have to wait to your next turn to put it out again. You can also put the token on one of these piles, and you'll take that whole pile whenever you want to. No one else can take it until you decide to do that. 
or you can also put it on a location and the same thing happens. Now, there are three tokens in the game. The rules are only one per location. So let's say I have one here and you also have a Sentinel token. You can't place one in this area, although you still could take a Lord if you so desired. Very powerful, useful items. Speaking of locations, we have a couple new ones. The Kraken's Lair, which is worth 15 points, but it's minus three at the end of the game for each Nebulous you have. So you want to have this and no Nebulous, and that's a really useful one. Here's one that matches the Smuggler Lords, two for each Smuggler Lord, plus five points. And then we have the Graveyard here, the Battlefield, the Abandoned Convoy, and the Megalodon. All four of those say the same thing. Grants immediate access to the loot deck. Well, what this does is this uses a small deck here, a loot deck. This car, this deck has seven sevens, six sixes, five fives, four fours, three threes, two twos, and a one in it. So when you do this, when you take this tile, you immediately will draw the top card from the deck. So here I got a three. Hey, this comes with a key. That's exciting. That's a pretty good deal. Now I can stop and take that card, which is worth three points at the end of the game, and a key, or I can draw again. So I decide to draw again. Seven points. Fantastic. Should I draw again or keep going? I'll draw again. Here, six plus an ally card. Fantastic. Should I stop or keep going? I keep going. Four and two pearls. Man, this is really good. I just got 20 points, a key, a card, and two pearls. I draw again, I get another seven. I'm immediately done. Also, the ones that I duplicated, the two sevens, are gone. So now, instead of getting those 20 points, I'm merely, and I use that in quotations, getting 13 points, a key, a card, and two pearls. So that's how all these work. When you take one of these, you get to do that. Of course, the deck's going to change. And of course, you can work with the numbers. If you draw the one, that's pretty good. You're going to be able to go again. You draw a seven, you're going to, your chance of drawing a duplicate of that are pretty high. And again, I should, I, I should quickly mention here that I was incorrect. There's no ones or twos. It goes from seven to three. But still, when you draw a three, the chance of that being duplicated is much lower than, for example, a seven. Now, I already said that this expansion looks really good, and I'm glad. And I will easily add this into my game. Lots of fun. Okay, easy enough. Let's start, though. There are some people who do not like the loot deck and these locations that give you access to it. Z Garcia is one of them. He feels that it's too unbalanced. And yes, I believe you can get 25 points and a whole pile of stuff from one of these if you're really lucky. Now, that probably won't happen. You will probably end up getting somewhere around a vicinity of 14 points or so on these. That's pretty good, though, as an average. These are certainly good. I love these because I love the whole push your luck aspect. But there's no doubt that these are really, really powerful. Uh, and so if you don't like that, just take them out. I think the rest of the expansion is worth getting. These are simple. Don't use them. I'll use them unless someone in my group doesn't like the idea, and they may not even show up anyway, but I'll take them if I can. The loot deck, I think, is fun, but certainly is powerful. Now, as for the rest of it, the new Kraken Allies and the Black Pearls, uh, whatever name they, I keep forgetting what they're called, we just call them Black Pearls or Silver Pearls. They're really cool. I really like that addition, because when one of those shows up, everyone's like, ooh, I want that card, but do I want those pearls? And at first you're like, oh yeah, I'll take some pearls, they're easy to get rid of. They're not as easy to get rid of as you think. And at the end of the game, a swing of six or seven negative points can really hurt you. So you really have to be careful with those. But though, having a wild, you know, you're like, oh, I need a yellow. Oh, but that's wild. That could be the yellow I need. Everyone loves wild cards, right? But here they come with a cost. Excellent. Also really easy to add into the base game. The Kraken figure, totally unnecessary, but I'm glad it's there. So that, I'll, that'll even teach the new players, because what does it matter? Well, that's pretty much it then. I mean, if you're going to use that, you might as well use the new lords. Note that I did, note that with these new lords, I think there's 18 new lords. Like I said, you're never going to run out of lords. I never saw that happen in a regular game anyway. I guess it can if people replace them a lot. But it's, I've always seen it happen by someone getting seven lords. And now, when you're teaching a game, that's all you have to teach. Hey, seven lords, it's the only way this game is going to end. Really like the new lords a lot. Really like the black pearls. You, I like the new location a lot. The, the, basically with the going through this loot deck, 
You may not like that, but I still think the expansion's worth it because that's such a minor part of the expansion. The rest of it's good. It's one of those expansions that doesn't add a lot, and it's easy enough for me when I'm teaching new players. I don't have to separate it out and teach without it. I can just teach you right in. It can easily fit in the base game, and that's where it's going in my collection. Very good. Certainly, if you like Abyss, check this out. It's it's made me, I mean, I liked Abyss anyway. I played again, wow, oh, I really like Abyss. This expansion doesn't like, it's not going to change your opinion on it, but it does add some new variety, which I think fans of the game will enjoy. Dice Tower Judgment, approved! Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Yeah. Yeah.